Hi everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. Last time I uh, struggled right at the end to get everything done and I didn't quite get it done. So what I'm going to do is edit in the last few minutes of last uh, yesterday's presentation into the middle of this one. So I've got a few minutes left. Um, I'm going to try to do a, a bit of cleanup here. So our stouting balance, I want to just review and make sure everything's factored up nice and pretty. Next year's starting balance should equal this year's ending balance. Um, kind of inclined to join these two together, but I'm not going to do that right now. And let's see how this looks. Well, we don't need deposit anymore. We don't need withdraw, I don't think. Nope. Uh, shouldn't need balance anymore. Our main program is using it. Yeah. So we'll have to kill that. Pen. What is failing? Savings account year. Oh, um, right. We'll change that to starting balance. Okay, that's it. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you next time. Okay, and now we're back in the present. So what I was doing was just doing some cleanup, and I was so rushed at the end of that video, I don't think I did a very good job. Um, one of the things that I did was I was playing around with main, and I just need to delete that. So let's start out by deleting that. Uh, yes. And let's make sure everything still works. Yep. And I also wanted to take a look at the scratch pad. We've fixed that. We've done the ending balance. We have taken out the deposit withdrawal, which is good enough. Uh, we do the next year properly. And I don't remember what I meant by get rid of savings account. Oh, that was the constructor. And I'm pretty sure we've done that. Let's just double check. Yeah, and now let's take a look. Is everything clean here? So starting balance, ending balance. Um, I suppose the interest rate is something that I coded, but I didn't explicitly put a test around. Let's go ahead and do that. A lot of duplication in the way I'm creating this savings account. Um, I think I'll go ahead and factor that out. Let's make sure all this works still. Is there anything else I want to clean up? Starting balance, interest rate, next year, and ending balance. Let's go ahead and move this up as well. That's pretty clean. I feel a lot better about this code than I did last time we looked at it, uh, at the end of episode two. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. So, what should we do next? Well, let's go ahead and factor this out. I could put in a setup block, but I've actually found that um, having a helper method seems to work better. And the reason for that is that whatever you put in your setup block, you're stuck with. All your tests have to use that setup, whereas this allows you to parameterize if you need to. Um, and actually, let's... Uh, rename that to new account and just do some quick cleanup here. Okay. Yep, that's all working. I could be more descriptive in my names here, but I don't think I need to just yet. Uh, maybe here I'll say, well, uh, we'll just say matches constructor and uh, matches constructor. And here, um, 
applies interest rate. And next year's starting balance equals this year's, next year's interest rate equals this year's interest rate. Okay, good. So what do we have left? Well, capital gains. Okay, everything's nice and clean. So let's go ahead and get the capital gains in there. So how do we want to approach that? Um, well, let's start with a test. Um, so the rule with capital gains is that you can withdraw capital gains tax um, is that you can withdraw your principal so that whatever money you spend on stocks uh, you can just take out but any money you made from appreciation of those stocks is taxed at some rate. I believe the rate is 25%. And once again, I need to emphasize I'm not a financial advisor. I'm really not actually an expert at this at all. What I've learned, I've learned from Google and the web and so forth. This is not financial advice. Do not take it as financial advice. And do not sue me for taking it as financial advice. Thank you very much. Okay, so my understanding of capital gains, which could well be very, very wrong, is that you can... Uh, take out whatever you put in, uh, but if you make money on your investments and you take that out, then you're taxed. So um, how do we want to approach that? I guess what we can say is we can say uh, can withdraw principal without incurring capital gains tax. So now I guess we're going to get our withdrawal back, our withdrawal method back in there, aren't we? Um, so create a new account. May have been premature on that new account method. Let's see, savings account year, year equals new savings account year. We'll come back and fix that up. I'm going to say that we put in 10,000 with an interest rate of 10. Okay, that's fine. Um, And if we withdraw $5,000, our ending balance should equal 5000 And let's not withdraw an even number. Let's withdraw 2000 or even $1,000 uh, so that our expected value doesn't match the amount we withdrew, just to prevent any funky bugs. Well. That doesn't really do much for us, but I guess that's good enough for now. If we do nothing here, that test should fail. Ooh. Why did that not fail? Oh, something is up. Huh. Very strange. Um, and you know what? Our ending balance is not going to be 9,000. It's going to be, uh, it is going to have interest. Now, if we said there was no interest rate on it, uh, then it's going to say expected 9,000, but was 10,000. Let's start with that, but that's actually not good enough. Um, hmm. I think we need to figure out how we want this to work with interest rate. Uh, what I did in my spreadsheet was that I had all the withdrawals happen at the beginning of the year and all the deposits happen at the end of the year. And this was just because I'm extra pessimistic. And uh, that means that I don't get the benefit of interest on anything that I deposit throughout the year. And I get the penalty of withdrawals at the beginning of the year. And this gives me a model that's fairly pessimistic. I, in the beginning, I did it right in the middle of the year, but then I got sort of this... Uh, when I was running out of money in retirement, I was getting these little piddly uh, $3 of interest that was causing the account to never clear out. So I changed it to just do the withdrawals at the beginning of the year, deposits at the end of the year, and that works pretty well. So I think what, that's what I want to do. So what that means is that the ending balance for this year should be 10% of 9000 And uh, yeah, let's, let's do that. So we withdraw 10,000, we withdraw 1,000, that gives us a balance of 9,000. 
and then um, we gain interest on that $9,000, which is $900. So we end up with a final balance of $9,900. And I think we can code that by just modifying the starting balance by the amount. Yes. Okay, so let's be really explicit about that and not make this about with uh, capital gains tax. Let's say that withdrawing funds occurs at the beginning of the year. There we go. Now, I'm not going to do deposits just yet because I, I do want this to be about capital gains. Um, we're running out of time. It's already been 10 minutes. Let's see. Um, that doesn't... I guess what we need to do is we need to say withdrawing more than principal incurs capital gains tax, which means that we need the... Uh, we need some way of telling this what our capital gains was. So I guess let's put in let's say that seven say that seven thousand dollars of this is capital gains. You can really see that primitive obsession. I mean what are all these numbers? It's just blah. Okay. So what that means that if we withdraw three thousand, then we're going to have seven thousand with uh, ending balance. Uh, seven thousand with ten percent interest gives us an ending balance of seventy-seven hundred. But then, if we withdraw more than that, let's say we withdraw. 5,000 more. Now we've got 2,000 in the bank, 2,200, 2,000 times 200, uh, time, or plus 200 in interest minus capital gains tax on that 5,000. So 5,000 times, let's say, 25%. Um, now this isn't going to compile at all. Uh, We've got this new capital gains number, but this is just sort of a way of getting it in there. So I'm going to toss this in. We'll come back and clean this up in a moment, or probably not in this video, but uh, again, you can see the pattern happening here. What I do is I just, when I'm trying to figure out an idea, I just sort of hack it in, and then as the idea becomes more clear, I clean up the code. So we're just going to hack this in for now. And let's say that capital gains so far. Uh, it occurs to me I don't need the uh, initializers. Okay, that's, oh, that's passivated. What is up with that? Eclipse does this funky thing with the way it runs its tests. I really dislike it. What I want to do is run all my tests all the time. But Eclipse is smart in some way, and it tries to just run what you've last run. I don't know. Uh, but it's obnoxious. Okay, so this is failing. No, it's not failing. It should be failing. Thank you. Um, use assert expected. Oh, boy. Okay, so 5,000 times 0.25 is, uh, okay, so I think we're going to have a failing test. I'm going to have to stop here. So thanks very much, and we will continue this next time.